Hello guys, welcome to Tech Made Easy. This is a review of the ROM Sano Gen Mod 12. We'll be reviewing this ROM on the Nexus 4, the 5 and the original Moto G. So this ROM is currently in the nightly stage. So it's not that rock stable, but it can be fairly used as a daily driver. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So firstly, the stock Sinusen Mod apps. Here's the Sinusen Mod music player. It has a good interface and is fairly simple to use. This is Audio FX, which is the equalizer of the music app. Overall, it's a good equalizer and is quite visually pleasing. Then comes Sinusen Mod's Messenger. It's simple and easy. Nothing much to say about it. Here's the file manager. I liked it especially because it has root access and it's a built-in app, so no more need of third-party managers. Next up is the sweet spot, the theme engine, which was awaited since a long time. All you need to do is download a theme from the Play Store, select the options and update. Once it's done, you'll see the theme applied in most of the aspects around the OS. The theme engine has just been released and it's under development and is somewhat buggy. You can even change the boot animation of your phone by downloading a theme which has a boot animation in it and installing it via the theme engine. Here's an example of it. Have a look. Pretty cool, isn't it? Next up is status bar customization. You can customize the status bar the way you want, which is a feature that will always be welcome. Here you can change the clock style, its alignment, the battery display style, you can display the battery, normal battery icon, portrait or landscape, or in a circle style. Another cool feature is that you can control the brightness by just sliding over the status bar. Quite useful sometimes. Up next is the modification of the notification panel. Quick pull down is a useful feature as some people find it annoying pulling the panel twice to access the settings icon. You can select the tiles that you want to be displayed in the panel and arrange them in your view. Another feature which just arrived in this update is the compass toggle. You can access the compass from the notifications panel. You can also enlarge the first two toggles and also activate or deactivate the brightness slider. hardware button controls. There is a left-handed mode for left-handed people. It shifts the navigation bar to other side of the screen. Next is the power menu. You can select the options to be displayed when you long press the power button. Here's the screenshot shortcut. calls end by pressing the power button. It's quite comfortable sometimes. You can wake up your device by pressing the volume buttons and even skip tracks with the help of volume buttons. You can also control the cursor the volume rockers.
Next comes the expanded desktop feature. All you have to do is select the app you want to view in the expanded mode. As you can see, here the status bar and the navigation bar are hidden. And your browser is in a full screen mode. Another cool feature. The lock screen shortcuts. Here you can select which app to open when swipe left or right from the lock screen. Here's an example. Left swipe from the lock screen and the music app is open. System profiles. Nothing much here. You can just switch between silent default and automobile profile. Up next comes tweets. First one is that you can close all the recent apps just by tapping the all clear icon on the top right. Next is double tap the status bar to sleep. Last one is advanced reboot options which can be activated from the developer's menu. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. Basically this was our first review. Please subscribe.